Welcome back. There are moments of insane joy when I get to introduce or reintroduce you to people I know and love. And this man is right high at the top of the list. You may remember him as our former producer at Good Day Orange County, but Dave DeSantis is one of the most wonderful, talented humans I know. And I wanted to use this opportunity to bring him back and find out what he's doing in the world today. A few years after he's, uh, you know, spread his wings beyond Good Day. So Dave, welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? <laughs> how does it feel? Um, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> Although we're not in, we're not in person, but this was sort of how we we ended our um, working relationship, you know, it, back in the day on Zoom. But isn't that crazy? No, it Full is circle. a little bit crazy. Full circle indeed, and because you know, recently I've had the opportunity to bring back some friends of Good Day, and we love that. And of course, with the years, everybody's moving on, but. Good Day's been going for seven plus years, which is amazing, remarkable. And yeah. I remember the day I walked in and said to you, I can't, can't do this anymore. And you said, but it's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> please, yeah. please stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it took, it took a minute for us to get our, our, our bearings. But once we did, we certainly were, were on a roll. You know, we were on a roll. We had so much fun with it. And just creating Good Day together with Amy was it, it was just fun. I mean, that that really proves that when you work with people you love, great things do happen. And now, you know, we've all kind of stepped away. As you know, I'm broadcasting today from uh, Mexico <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're in your new studio and I would love to be able to share your new journey with our Good Day viewers. What what are you up to? It's like a where where are they now, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, well, since I since I left when I when I left Laguna Woods, I had an opportunity to um, to work with an ad agency and a, a gentleman who I worked with on some freelance projects like years ago he reached out to me and said that there was, was, was an opening and I checked out the company and they did a lot of really cool stuff. And it kind of seemed like a logical next step as a producer um, and kind of more on the, the advertising and uh, branding side of things, which was something that I was always kind of interested in. Um, so I went over there, I was there for about a, let's see, a little over a year. Um, and then unfortunately I, along with some others were laid off, but in that time I rekindled my love of music, which obviously, you know, I've always loved music, but specifically dance music and DJing and electronic music and things like that. And at the office, they had a built-in DJ booth. So I started like on my break, I would like play music and people would come into the, like the lunch area. And I was like practicing and stuff like that and kind of getting, you know, getting my, my wheels going again. Um, and then I was, I started to think like, oh, you know, I, I, I've always produced music, but it's been a long time since I dabbled in that genre. So I started producing music again. And um, last year I had, I had a relatively successful year in terms of releasing music and getting music signed by, by, I, I think I released I released 10 songs last year and nine of them were signed by independent record labels, which was, wow. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's a lot of music. I think there's like 60,000 or something songs released on Spotify, like every day. So there's, it's kind of an oversaturated market. But every day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's a crazy amount of music being released and like all, all different genres and things like that. But what's so cool, and you can probably attest to this from being, you know, doing Good Day OC remote and using the power of the internet, like I was able to network and, and make friends all over the world. And some of the closest friends I have now that I 
do music with and collaborate with and send stuff to and talk to, I've never even met in person. You know, they're in Brazil, they're in Canada, they're in, you know, on both sides of Canada, um, Mexico, <laughs> uh, the UK, there's just like, it opened me up to this whole world of like really talented creators and producers and things like that. Um, and people that I feel like I've known for years too. It's, it's really, really cool. I made some really, really good friends in, in, in this process. So, um, so yeah, so that was last year. And then, you know, with that, I started doing shows and playing, playing out and things like that. And, um, I don't do weddings. That's the the one thing I don't I don't do. <laughs> too stressful. There hasn't and, been a disco wedding invitation coming your way. <laughs> you know, there's been it's been joked about and teased a little bit, but I don't think I I could do it. I did I did my wife's work event this past weekend, and um, she was she's in in, in finance, and so it was a bunch of financial advisors and. I had everybody dance in and the, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That's, that's gotta be a real, that's gotta be a real high for you. I mean, oh, yeah. getting people moving, get, you know, sending that kind of energy out to a crowd. Yeah. How does that feel? It's like, it's instant gratification, <laughs> you know, which is cool. Um, and when I get a chance to play my own music and seeing people move and vibe to it is is really cool um i i met a couple of people last year that through their network started putting me on shows and so i've been playing in huntington beach at this this venue right on the beach which has been really cool and it's it's almost like like a video game kind of where you know you meet somebody and they give you an opportunity and you level up and then you meet somebody else and they give you an opportunity and you level up and it, it just kind of keeps building on itself. And I've always thrived on producing and, you know, bringing people together and making things happen. And how can we like get this person to work with this person? And maybe this person has an opportunity and you know exactly what I mean. Like you're- Yep, I do. You're a connector of people and, and things. So, uh, and being able to do that like in music has is, is just been so much fun, but, um, yeah, it's really cool to play a show and play stuff that I, I, I'm I'm getting an opportunity to play places where people want to hear stuff they've never heard before. And a lot of times when you're DJing and you're playing music, people think you're a jukebox. And so you're playing, you know. Everybody and, wants you to play Celebrate and YMCA. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then somebody <laughs> will come along and ask for like uh, Paul Simon or something that doesn't fit at all. And then you don't play it. And then they're like, well, what's up? Where's my track? And it's like, well, it doesn't really work with the the tempo right. and the energy level right now. But <laughs> being able to play places where people just want to go and, and as a DJ and, and a producer, your job is to present. And so you put together an hour of music to present in a in a way that takes people on a journey and those are the moments that i just live for that i i, I love and i'm getting to do more and more of those now which is which is really cool i love that for you and I, yes i totally relate right every time i put together a show here i want there to be not necessarily a theme, but cohesion and connection between yeah. the guests and the stories that we tell. And and also that Zoom literally opened up the world. You know, our guest list was no longer people who were willing to drive the 405 to get to us. <laughs> but all of a sudden, our guest list became the world. And what a difference. So in in the world of DJing, and as you're telling these stories, I'm guessing that like me, so many viewers are thinking, oh, you're right. I guess I just always thought the DJ was there to play requests and and do what we want. But no, from an artistic perspective, it's your expression. So does that then feed your energy to create new, create more? Does it inspire and kind of enlighten you as to where you could go next that you haven't been before? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's I had so I had a um I had a show a couple months ago and um 
my 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 friend was getting married and the night before the show I was at his bachelor party and it was a Saturday a song came out the day before on Friday that I was like I want to I want to remix this I remixed it on Saturday morning and produced a, like a four minute song and then tested it and played it that night and was able to see how the crowd reacted and how they how they you know vibe to it and I was like okay this it works it was like proof of concept so I put it on online and I think last I looked it had like 3,000 plays or something like that um wow. so it's almost it's almost like I think you're you're able to see what works and what doesn't right away and then I'm like oh okay well that that works or hearing it it's all context too if I'm listening to something in this room by myself with my dog wherever he is over here back uh, there <laughs> yeah he's back there somewhere if I'm playing something and and I'm just like listening by myself and working on it it's different than playing it for an audience in seeing what their reaction is to it. A lot of times I'll play stuff for, for Katie, for my wife. And she's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, Oh, there he is. You heard me. There he is. I'm up it. <laughs> um, she'll, she'll, she'll be like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. But she doesn't really listen to a lot of the like the stuff that I listen to and that inspires me but then she'll hear it when I play a show and it's a different experience you know so I try to sort of to, to answer your question in a long-winded sort of way every <laughs> show or any any opportunity I get to play either my own music or other people's music and see how people react to it it gives me ideas and inspiration of like oh maybe I should make more, something like this or maybe I can really surprise them by doing this or that you know and like get it get so a little give us out. an example from your process that you've just explained right you come home you mix you remix how do you actually release a song like you just say poof you're a song and out you go <laughs> how does that <laughs> um, work <laughs> it, it depends it depends if it's if it's all original um you can there's a bunch of distribution services that you can pay them a small fee and they'll put it out to Apple Music, Spotify, um, Amazon, all the streaming services like Tidal, any and everywhere, YouTube. Um, if you get a label that's interested in your stuff, which is the hardest part because there's so many artists, there's so many people submitting music, um, they will take care of the distribution for you. And ideally send it out to labels and send it to, or send it to their fan base and things like that. And every label kind of has its own sound. If I'm taking something and remixing it and sampling it, you have to usually pay um, a licensing fee or get the sample cleared. I don't have the ability to do that. So that's where I'll use a website like SoundCloud or something to put it up for free and just sort of track what people like and what people, you know, are, are resonating with. So it kind of just depends on, on what the song is, you know, if it's a really obscure sample, if it's something that I'll go on YouTube and find something super weird that I know won't get copyright flagged. And those are things that you can send to labels and they'll usually, if they like it, they'll, they're more likely to pick it up. But if it's like a Taylor Swift sample or something like that, you usually have to just put that out for free, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure that's not doing anything for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So very fun. So what's next for you now that you're expanding in this world? What's the next step? Um. So last year was really about uh, learning more of the technical side of things and figuring out my production process. And this year I, I have that really dialed in and I've got a pretty good workflow. And so now I've been trying to open it up to collaborate with other artists and network with more people and kind of, you know, grab their following and, and they kind of grab my following. And there's so many, there's so many talented artists out there. I just heard this random song on SoundCloud yesterday. There's this guy in Texas. And so I, I connected with him and we started chatting 
another guy like is in the Netherlands and he sent me some stuff he was working on. So we're collaborating. Um, and the most exciting collaboration I have right now is with uh, Hannah Geraldo, who's uh, Pat Benatar's daughter. So that's, oh. that's a pretty, pretty cool um, opportunity that sort of fell on, on in my lap. And I didn't know who she was when, when I had like connected with her and I just heard this song on, on Spotify and um, I was like, oh, I'd really like to remix that. And I sent this guy a message who put it on his Instagram story and then he connected us. And it's just, you know, it's just funny how things work out. So that the lifespan of that song is, is we, we started in September and I just finished the master last night. So <laughs> It's, wow these things take a really long time to come to fruition but um yeah that's that's really exciting I'm really really pumped on that and then there's a couple other other ones in the works too that I I don't quite have a green light on yet so I don't want to I don't want to jinx it but um cool so yeah. where can people hear where can people hear your music um Spotify Apple Music YouTube my artist name is is my first and middle name, so David Paul, um, and I'm always putting stuff out on my my social media feeds and a lot of pretty active on my my Instagram, and all the skills that I've I've taken from um, you know video editing and and networking yeah. and the stuff I've done with you and the stuff I got to do in Laguna Woods and at the agency, it's all it all works with what I'm doing now. And so I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to take all those skills and apply them in kind of a, a new direction. Um, and Oh, one, one, it's very uh, exciting. Yeah. No, I was gonna say one really cool thing we did this past weekend, my friend got one of those crazy Tesla cyber trucks. And so we went out to Coachella and we went into the parking lot and did like a pop-up DJ set. So <laughs> Yeah, it was it was really well received actually. So this summer we're gonna start doing some more of that stuff too. So you never know, you might you might see me on the side of the road playing some house music, uh, getting people dancing. I, you know what? I would stop. I would stop for you absolutely. And <laughs> if I remember correctly on Instagram, your David Paul made that. Is Correct. that right? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love to follow you there. And I know everybody's going to want to see what you're up to. And, you know, I'm going to ask you to play us out. So let's, we, you'll send me something that we can, we can use to play us out here. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on the show. It's so good to see you. And I miss you madly. And I will see you again soon. Come back to California. We miss you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> 